What's up guys, this is your boy Glass Gaming. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys a World Chalice video. So if you guys have ever been on my channel, you know that World Chalice is my favorite deck. I've been playing it for a uh, few years now. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty fun deck. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I would definitely pick up this deck if you had the chance. Now that Diviner is in the TCG, this deck just becomes even more consistent, even more better. But it does have its problems against hand traps and floodgates and all of the above so it's going to be pretty hard to play this unless you're running cards like drag down and exchange online so yeah anyways we're gonna get straight into this video i chose to use the most generic vanilla monster so we're gonna choose shade brigadine because it doesn't actually inflict with any of your combos and you know it can't get ash or anything so i just chose this one because it's the most generic possible and one copy of World Legacy World Chalice, which is all you're trying to get to in the deck. As you can see from this replay, you don't even need Venus. Um, I know a lot of the combos I share on my Venus are one card Venus combos, like Orcist and Dragon Links and uh, Fairies and all of the above. And plants and many other things I show off. But you don't need Venus. I think it's pretty obvious you don't need Venus at this point by the time I post this video. But all you're trying to do is get to World Legacy World Chalice. And I'm just going to kind of show off what World Legacy World Chalice does, plus any vanilla extender. So let's get straight into it. We're going to set our copy of the generic vanilla, and we're going to activate it and summon it. So we're going to go ahead and get our generic vanilla on field. This can be any target. e tele target. It could be your um, unexpected die. Really anything that does not require your normal summon to get a vanilla on field. We're going to turn it into our copy of M-Duck and normal summon our World Legacy World Chalice. Once we make the World Legacy World Chalice, we're going to go ahead and turn it into an Almirage. Now, once Almirage is summoned, we are going to use the effect of World Legacy World Chalice since it was normal summon slash set. Uh, you can summon two World Chalice monsters from your deck. So we're going to go ahead and summon our copy of Lead, the World Chalice Fairy, and one copy of Beckoned, the World Chalice. So we're going to use the effect of Lead, the World Chalice Fairy, allowing us to add World Chalice Gar Dragon. Next, we are playing a second Imduck, so we're going to go ahead and turn that Beckoned into a copy of Imduck. And if you're wondering why we chose Beckon in specific is because, or specifically Beckon, is because it's a level four and it can be summoned through your World Chalice Guard Dragon. Um, you're gonna see where it's going in a second. It's pretty obvious by now. I've kind of featured off this combo in the channel a lot of times, so yeah. Anyways, we're gonna make our copy of Dagda and use the effect of Imduck. Imduck will summon our World Chalice Guard Dragon from hand and we will go and turn those into a lib. So what's going to happen from here is we're going to go lib chainlink 1, chainlink 2, dagda. So we're going to go to set our card off dagda, and we're going to set our copy of succession. Now we're going to activate our set copy of succession, summoning a dragon monster from our graveyard. We do play galaxy serpent and stuff like that, so you can definitely summon that instead of your world chalice guard dragon if you like. So we're going to go and go from here. We're going to summon our copy of World Chalice Guard Dragon. And we will turn it into a copy of Guard Dragon LP. So LP will summon a dragon from deck. We're going to summon our copy of Brotar, the Omni Dragon Brotar. And we're going to use its effect. So in this combo, you obviously see I have no hand. The reason why is because your hand really depends on what you draw. Um, for instance, you know, you could be drawing stuff like... Your copies of venuses or diviners already but i just want to show you the bare minimum so i'm just going to say we discard a card from hand we still have three cards in hand so after the discard off our copy of brotar we will have two cards in hand so we'll use the effect of brotar discarding a card from hand like i wrote in the chat box so do not get confused and we will go ahead and reveal some fairy targets and dragon targets um, I showed Leviathan, Venus, Harold, and Christia because those are the most, you know, common to search off this. Of course, you can search stuff like Eva and Lee, but you already have accessibility to those. Plus, by the point, if you're doing this combo, there's absolutely no reason to put them up. So, as you can see from this combo, you can either add Diviner, Venus, Christia, or Leviathan, but I will be adding the Venus just because it gives us the most bodies on board. Plus, we have not committed our normal summon for the turn. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to turn him into our copy of Romulus. Romulus will activate, allowing us to get some discard fodder. You can add really anything you want. You could play Lance with um, uh, Phalanx. You could play Ravine as I'm playing. 
but personally i'm a fan of ravine because you know just the uh overall flexibility with the card next what's gonna happen is i'm gonna turn these two into a copy of appalooza to ensure that our venus gets to play for free uh imperm would hurt here but really if your opponent's gonna imperm you wouldn't it be either dagda or lib so yeah we're not gonna even put that in the equation now what's gonna happen from here is i'm gonna go venus we're gonna go ahead and summon it, and since we did not co commit our normal summon for our normal normal summon or original normal summon, we can go ahead and summon the Venus. Uh, we're gonna pay a thousand. We're gonna summon two shine balls. It, they are separate effects, so you're gonna be paying for cost and summoning two separately. But we're just gonna summon out two. We're gonna turn them into a copy of Condemned Dark Lord. So this is where that copy of Ravine actually comes in handy. If you don't know already, Condemned Dark Lord discards a card from your hand. And then you can either dump or add a Dark Lord monster directly from the deck. So if I want, I could send stuff like Superbia, or I can add stuff like Asmodeus, or really do anything I want from here. So I'm going to go ahead and discard my copy of Ravine that we added off Romulus to add our copy of Asmodeus. Now what's going to happen from here is I'm going to go ahead and use the Effect of Venus one last time, since we're not going to be looping it or anything crazy. And we're going to go ahead and summon out one more Shine Ball. Once we do that, I'm going to make, using my copy of Condemned Dark Lord and Venus, a copy of Parsath. So if you don't know what this card does, it's basically the deck savior. Um, if you already drew your copy of Venus, you can go directly for Christia and stuff like that. But it really depends on the matchup. Plus, it's way more safe to go with stuff like um, Tornado Dragon and Scythe and everything because of Dark Rulers and Droplets and all of the above right now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do from here is I'm going to make the Parsath link. This will allow me to, whenever a very monster leaves the fuel, I can banish one from my graveyard and then summon one with a higher level than the banished target. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that to a Link Spider. This could be a third Imduck if you want to play a third one, but I think it's unnecessary, especially because you're trying to spam Vanillas to be able to put up your World Legacy World Chalice plus a few extenders. Now, since the fairy monster left the field, we can use the effect of Parsath, allowing us to banish one the lower level and someone with a higher level from her hand so once that happens we can summon asmodeus and use its effect and this is why we play eva eva gets dumped we'll be able to banish two fairies from her grave it doesn't have to be the shine balls you can do stuff with mannequin cat black rose garden anything in this combo you're going to be seeing i'm just going to be putting up the most consistent lock overall so i'm going to be doing the artifact lock there's many other ways to do this combo you know lee plus um, unexpected die and many other stuff so we can go ahead and banish our two uh, Shine Balls. And we're going to add Herald of the Orange Light and a copy of Diviner of the Heralds. So this is why I actually didn't opt to open um, or actually add off our copy of Brotar, the copy of Diviner, because we're going to get access to it either way. This all also can be stuff like Herald of the Purple Light or Herald of the Green Lights if you want to stop certain spells or traps. So it's very, um, very versatile. Now what's going to happen from here is I'm going to go to make my Codebreaker link. Um, the next Codebreaker I do summon after this level 4 target. We are not going to actually play in the final build unless you want to be doing all the one card combos, stuff like that. Um, it's more of a flex spot than anything and I'll show you the card right now. We're going to go and turn it into a copy of Codebreaker Virus Berserker. Um, in this combo, you don't necessarily need it, but for the overall one card combo and how the deck works at the moment, you're going to have to play it. So we're going to go ahead and use its effect, allowing us to summon our copy of Zero Day back. So now we have a level four body and we can turn these two into a link four. We can turn them into our copy of Avermax. So we have a link three and we'll treat this as a one. So this all together is four. We could, we have uh, two extra deck monsters. So we summon the Avermax to protect us from stuff like... Uh, just big bodies trying to attack over stuff like Appalooza to get rid of it. Now what's going to happen from here is I'm going to use my effective puppy in Graveyard, allowing us to banish it and send a or summon a copy of Beckoned, which is our level 4 target like I explained earlier. Now once that happens, I'm going to go in and summon my Tornado Dragon. Um, normally I make it in defense because, you know, 100 extra attack really doesn't do anything at the end of the day. But this is where the combo, you know, really ends. Uh, there's many different combo sequences that I can show in the deck. I made multiple different videos on this. I made, I think, at least six of them before this. 
and this is just the most consistent way to set up the deck i actually incorporated dragons and fairies into the deck just because how well they synergize like you don't have to run pisty and saryuja and striker dragons and everything like this if i really would i play this build for now until we get you know an updated profile or something like that but for now, I think this is the most consistent way to play the deck. There's no reason to run, you know, the build without any win con or a very inconsistent build without a one card combo or one card starter. So I think this is the best way to play the deck at the moment. The only iffy thing I have about this build, though, is Tornado Dragon dies to Dark Ruler. Um, you're going to start seeing stuff like Mystic Mine more and more because of the formats changing, of course. Plus, it's a lot slower right now. The combo decks aren't as thriving as they should be. But, as you'll see, um, Tornado Dragon does lose to Dark Ruler and Mystic Mind, so it's very iffy. It depends on the deck you're going against. If you're going game one, i definitely go Tornado Dragon, just go ahead and shotgun it and summon your copy of Scythe. But going, going game two and on, I'm sure they're going to have stuff like Dark Rulers and Mystic Minds, so you really have to learn the interactions between the decks you're playing against. So anyways, this is the full combo. Um... There's a lot more you can do with this deck, as I've shown in other videos. I've set up way crazier boards than this, but I'm just saying this is, like, the easiest way to pull off the combos without, you know, running excessive bricks and stuff like that. Anyways, I hope you people enjoyed the video. Um, this isn't all what World Chalice can do. As you've seen from my other videos, I've done stuff with Orcist, I've done stuff with Guard Dragons, Dragon Links, um, Plants, um, Warriors for even, and uh, many other stuff like that, Fairies, and everything above. Anyways, I hope you people enjoyed the video. I hope it taught you something if you didn't know already about World Chalice. And if you're wondering, I might actually have a deck profile coming up really soon, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, guys, I hope you people enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. It actually helps the channel a lot. And we're actually going to try to hit 200 subscribers, uh, hopefully this year. Anyways, see you guys later. Bye.